Hey guys, James here. I'm um, going to try to be doing a little series here. Uh, I'm going to call it uh, Tank Side Talk or something like that. I, I think Tank Side Talk is probably a good one I'm going with right now, kicking around my head. Now, I'm not sure I'm going to do one every week or how I'm going to do it. Before I really get into any details, I just want to put a disclaimer out there. Um, I'm no biologist. I'm no scientist, I'm no expert. I'm just a guy in the hobby, just been around for about a year, taking what I learned, doing what I can in my tank, and learning from my own mistakes. I'm learning from other people's mistakes. So um, I hope some of this information I provide to you guys will work, will help you. Um, may, it may not. Again, I'm no expert. This is just what I find. This is just what I worked for me, and this is how it's going. Uh, so, like I said, I'm gonna call this uh, side tank uh, talk. I'm gonna basically come up with a, a topic and talk about. Um, and I'll probably take suggestions from you guys. I'm gonna take uh, like the farm board brief club. I'm gonna see what's going popular right now, and go play. Okay. Yes. Yes, you can get crowns. Sorry, guys. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to take and see what's popular in the club right now, see what's going on. Um, so, really, right now, this video, the first episode of this, is going to be on. Um, on so guys, girls, go coloring your room. Okay. So, yeah. Um, I just had a uh, dilemma I was dealing with with my tanks, and uh, it seems like a lot of people have questions on tanks, uh, comments. Everyone has different kind of tanks and stuff like that. So I figured I'm going to give you guys what I know about my tanks, my situations I have with my tanks, and uh, go from there. Again, like I said, I'm no expert. Um, I'm sure I'm going to get backlash from people who are saying I shouldn't be doing things this way. You know what? It's my tank. My t uh, fish seem to be doing good. I'm going to continue doing this way um, until I learn otherwise. Now, let's get a little history here. I got into doing saltwater tank, like I said, just about a year ago. And when I set out down this road, I had two fish in mind I wanted. I want a clownfish, <clears throat> I want a yellow tank. Those were my two goal fish to get. Um, so when I started doing research, and at that time, I only had a 36 gallon tank. Started doing some research. Tanks, you should not put in 36 gallon tanks, according to the internet. Um, they need room to swim around, they're fast fish. So, I was a little disappointed. I was like, great, I can't get the one fish I really want in my tank because I don't have the size. Talking with a co-worker of mine who's been doing tanks for years, talking to a live fish store and taking other information, I was informed I could get away with a yellow tank in a 36 gallon tank. There was key features to look for. One, make sure there are plenty of room for them to swim around. Two, don't go too many tanks. Again, one, two, uh, even two might be a little uh, pushing it for a 36 gallon tank. Uh, so, with that information in hand, my tank ready, I went and I got my clown and I got my yellow tank. My yellow tank went for about a month, give or take, and died. Now, at that time, so new to the hobby, I wasn't feeding seaweed. Now, I was feeding flakes every day. I was also substituting uh, frozen shrimp in there, so he was getting that. He was getting flakes. Um, I actually am not 100% sure he died just because his diet. Uh, the first one in there, he uh, actually was laying on the ground next to a rock that fell. I don't glue my rocks now. I, all my rocks are stacked so they can move anytime I want them to. So I 
was one that impressed me where Rock fell, trapped him, and uh, he died from that. Not positive, again, happened while I was at work, so I don't know exactly what happened. So, a little disappointed. Really wanted to yell Tang, all that stuff. Went a little bit longer. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go with a second, another Tang. Get my Tang going. I really wanted the clown and Tang in there. Picked up another yellow Tang, and again, another mistake. Did not put seaweed in the Tang. Uh, fed him. He went a month, exactly one month, and then I came home from work, found him on the sand bed, actually crushed coral in that thing, uh, on bed with shrimp and crabs and snails on top of him. So, at that time, rode off tanks. Can't do it. I, I, I just not capable of having tanks in my 36 gallon tank. That was around December, and behold, I come into a new tank. Uh, that's a whole nother story, but I come into a new tank, which is this guy right here, a 54 gallon corner tank. Again, not recommended for tanks. But you know what? Call me stubborn. I wanted my yellow tank. So, I went out, got another tank. After tank was settled, everything was good, going great. Again, it wasn't December when I got the tank set up. In fact, uh, it was probably May or so when I got the tank in there. And that, I mean, I, I already have a flame angel in there. I have clown in there, uh, Danzel. So the tank's been going for a while. So don't think I just throw a tank in there right away. So, but I wanted to make sure I did it right this time. So before even picking up my tank, I wasn't sure I was going to go with a yellow tank. Um, I picked up a seaweed clip, clip and I picked up some seaweed clip. Then I went to the live fish store. I looked around. I was really tempted to get a blue tank. Um, they were really nice, you know, the Dory and the Clown, Finding Nemo, great mixture. But as talking with my wife, I already had two. Blue, uh, blue Danzel, or Yellowtail Danzel, which are blue. I already had the um, two chromies, blue and green chromies. So I really had blue in my tank. I didn't have any yellow. So um, we went and got a yellow tank. We put him in there. He's been doing great. Two months, he's fattening up. He's eating shrimp, he's eating seaweed. Great going on. Now, People have mentioned, oh, my tank's not eating the seaweed. I feed my tank green seaweed. I know some people use red and purple. I haven't tried those yet. I'm using green. Uh, he seems to like it. It took him two to three days before he even touched the seaweed. I would put the seaweed on the clip. I will let it sit, and sit there for an hour or so in the tank. Wouldn't touch it. Again, I would do it twice a day. I heard that they really need to have seaweed in their diet. So, again, not touching. Two or three days, and then he finally goes at it. And he goes crazy on the seaweed now. I put it in there, within a minute or two, he's up there ripping it apart. The other fish just floating back. Let the plates from him tearing it apart come to them, and they eat that. And they let him do all the work. Fast forward to a week ago. Well, again, me being who I am, I'm being stubborn, go to the live fish store. You know how that is. I go looking for some uh, snails. I wanted some snails before uh, I went to Riff of Blueza because, you know, maybe I would pick up something there. Uh, so I wanted to try to get more snails in my tank to help keep it clean, get it moving, all that stuff. So, why at the store, I'm looking around, I walk by this one tank. There's a powder brown tank in there, decent size, about the same size as my current yellow tank. He follows me around the tank. I was like, oh, it's nice. But I kept walking, looking around. I wasn't there to buy a fish. I come to another tank in the corner, and there's a blue tank there. Now, recently, 
I've been looking at the blue tangs, and my lab crew sort has big uh, blue tangs. They were too big for my tank. Even if you just put them in there, they've been too big. So this guy was the size of my clown fish. He was a baby, you can say. Really small. I was like, you know what? I can get him, put him in. When he grows, he gets too big, take him out, give him back to the fish store, and get sort of credit. Start talking to the clerk there at the store, tell him I have a yellow tang. And uh, I know that the tangs like to fight, they're territorial, all that stuff. So as I got in the conversation with the clerk, we both mutually agree that the blue tang may not have been the best route due to the size. Um, we figured the yellow tang would really uh, go do a number on them. Why in the conversation? I did mention I had a quarantine tank set up. Um, not much. I really never even used it. It was my old 36 gallon tank. It was sitting there, ready to go. So, Clark was like, well, you know, if it gets too bad, take the yellow guy out, put him in the quarantine, he has a timeout. I still were concerned about getting the blue tang the size they are. So, Daddy. hold on, hold on, sweetheart. Okay. They broke off. They broke off? Okay. Yeah, and then I tried to fix it. Okay. So I asked you to do it. Yeah. Okay. And I tried to do it right, so. There you go. I'm going to ask you. <laughs> Sorry, have? guys. So, yes, I had, uh, I was still concerned about getting the blue tang, even though, yes, I could throw them, one of them in my quarantine tang and all that stuff. He did mention, though, that the yellow tanks are the most aggressive tanks. Again, like I said, I'm no expert. I'm taking his word on that. I've read that a couple other places, but I don't know for a fact. So he's like, you know, you would have been better off if the yellow tank was your last tank you're putting in your tank. And then he mentioned, he's like, well, you're still concerned about the blue tank. He's like, why don't you look at a bigger tank? He's like, we have some nice size uh, powder browns and uh, other size tanks. I was like, you know what, you're right. There was one that caught my eye on the tank down this aisle. So we went and looked at that. Like I said, same size as my yellow tank. So, you know what, I pulled the trigger. Decent price for them, brought them home. I love the colors on them. Got the snails, got the powder brown. They're floating in the tank. I aquaman them. Put them in the tank, the yellow tank goes nuts. He's tacking the uh, powder brown. The powder brown is just sitting in his cor in the corner, like, I, I'm new home, I don't know what to do. Yellow guy's going to town. Uh, I put some seaweed in there, thinking maybe the yellow tank will go up after the seaweed, leave the uh, powder brown alone. Nope. He start, the yellow tank, getting so nuts, started attacking my other fish. Uh, flame Angel, the clowns, anything that came near him, he'd just tail whip him. So, I wasn't going to have that happen. It was time to pull out the yellow tank and put him in timeout. Well, that turned into a nightmare, let me tell you. I have 90, about 90 pounds of live rock in my tank. I have sand, so sand's moving around fish, you know, bury their uh, caves underneath the rocks and stuff like that. You know how it is, guys. Well, the yellow tang had his hideout. Get underneath the rock, would come out, attack the fish, go back under. Every time I came in with the net, he would attack the net. Before I could scoop him up, right back underneath the rocks. What would I have to do? I wasn't going to get rid of my powder brown. Again, I'm stubborn. I will admit it. So, it's time to pull out the rocks. Start pulling rocks out. But be careful. I have some yellow sour polyps. Uh, yeah, I see you, I can't find the ladder for this. Hey, oh, I, yeah. Sorry. I know sorry, guys. Yeah, home, taking care of two kids. You know how that is. All day off from work. So, anyway, start pulling out the rocks, but I have to be careful. I have yellow sour polyps, which we weren't doing the best as is. I, I had sort of like, like four heads, only one was really opening up. Another story there. 
I have some zoo amphis have been doing good. I also have a bulb tip anemone. So I can't pull those guys out of the tank, so I gotta be careful. Move my zealots because they're right on their own rock, but they're leaning up against another rock. And I start pulling out rocks. And I leave the rock that the bubble tip's on. Daddy, Daddy. Put this on. It has to be a bathing suit. And they don't do it in the water. Yes. They don't do it right now. There you go. So, I start pulling the rocks out, handing them to my wife. As she puts them in the bucket, and we go from there. I leave the bubble tip in, I leave the uh, sour polyps in, I leave the zillows in, but move them around just so I get this yellow tang out. Finally, probably I would say a good hour of trying to capture the yellow tang, I pull them out. Get them in the net, take them to quarantine, put them in there, he calms down. Brown town, uh, tang calms down. They're swimming in their own tanks. They're happy. They're doing fine. I was like, all right, rocks back in, course change escape, all, you know, you know, all that story. But this video is on my tanks and my story with my tanks. So again, seaweed. I only have one seaweed clip. So I use a little trick from uh, Willie D out there. Another farm boy member. And uh, he has some good videos. I use one of my magnets as a uh, clean magnet cleaner as a seaweed holder in my quarantine tank. So I was giving seaweed to my yellow tank, plus more normal feeding, and seaweed to my brown tank. Again, brown powder brown took about two days before he would actually start going for the seaweed. He still doesn't go at the yellow tank up there and goes nuts. But he does go up there more frequently now, eats more of it, and uh, they share. All the fish jump in now on the seaweed. Uh, again, I'm feeding twice a day with the green seaweed. I might try a different seaweed with the, yellow uh, the powder brown, I'm not sure. But that's a different story. Again, I have my yellow tang in my timeout tank, powder brown in my display tank. Everybody's happy, yellow tang, not too happy in the quarantine tank. He doesn't want to be alone, apparently. He's just swimming around, fins up, looking mean as all. Finally, I was like, you know what? I'm going to keep him in there for a week. Um, and then put him back in. So, a week goes by. A little less than a week, six days. Yesterday, I decided, last night, I decided to put him back in. But... Again, I'm talking to other people, doing reading, following stuff. You want to try to make transition as stress-free as possible. And that's what was another concern about my powder brown when I put him in. Was he just came into a new home. And then getting attacked, his stress level is going to be through the roof. So that's why I wanted to get the yellow tang out of there. So, six days goes by, yellow tang doesn't look so mean anymore in the quarantine tank. He's eating like a champ. He's nice and big, powder brown, nice big, fat belly. They're both doing great, They're both healthy. So I was like, you know what? Good time to move fish is when the lights are going down. So it's not so bright. Also, I think during the feeding time would be another good time to move them, knowing that there's going to be food or something to distract the fish. So, I put my second round of seaweed in my display tank and go and get my yellow tang. Fish are eating the seaweed. I bring the yellow tang out, put him in the tank. He swims. He's like, I'm in a new home now. Doesn't even remember that he used to be the king in that tank. Powder Brown started attacking him. Again, they're only tail whipping each other, they're not nipping. I didn't see any nipping at each other, just tail whips. But the powder brine wasn't attacking as violently as the yellow tang was 
a week ago. He would just push him around with his tail. Never actually, I don't even think he actually made contact. Just kind of, you know, shake my tail at you. I don't like you type deal. So, I was like, you know what? Let me sit back and wait. My lights are going down. The seaweed in there. Let these guys figure it out. Again, advice from Willie D. He uh, told me, give it a day or two. He's like, he had the same experience. He uh, had a yellow tang, and then he put five tangs in. And it took him a couple of days to get used to each other and uh, all that stuff. Again, Will D has a much bigger tank, perfect size for tangs, and he, he's been the hobby, he knows what he's doing. So again, I'm just going with my experience. So, that's it. Yellow tang, powder brown, they're in the tank. Powder brown starts backing off a little more. Yellow guys, then powder, they're going back and forth, but they're not doing it violently like a week ago. There, once in a while, this one by rock, tails at each other, that's it. Powder brown will go up, get seaweed, goes back on hiding, yellow tang, go get seaweed, goes back hiding, this one around, probably 20, 30 minutes, I maybe see maybe one tail whap at each other in about a five minute period, uh, where it was like oh, constantly, a week ago, I mean, like that yellow guy was going nuts on them. So, I was like, you know what? I think they're happy, they're fine. This morning, I get up, I'm looking at my tank, everyone's happy, everyone's swimming around. I, don't, I haven't seen any tail whap at each other at all. Uh, I fed them, they're, they're fine. So, for me, guys, that's my story with my tank. I hope some of this information helps someone out there who might want to do a tang in a 54 gallon tank. People are going to tell you you can't do it. I'm telling you, in my experience, you can. Now, like I said, I'm no expert. Each tank is different. But in my situation, I've been doing good. I have a, a yellow tank going for almost two and a half months now in the 54 gallon. Going strong, healthy. No ick, no signs of stress, except for the little fighting between the powder brown and him. Everyone else is getting along. Powder brown's going on six to seven days now in the tank, so I still gotta play that by ear. I can't say much about that, but they're both living in harmony. They're both going great with each other right now. They're swimming around. I see if I can see him. The powder brown's out, but the yellow guy's around there somewhere. But everyone's happy. So again, guys, if your tang's not eating seaweed, try a different color, give it a couple days. I'm not saying don't be concerned. Definitely be concerned. Make sure they're eating. Watch them. Don't just be like, oh, I'll wait a couple days and make sure you eat. Definitely keep an eye on them. Make sure that you're getting other food besides seaweed. Frozen shrimp is good. For me, flakes too. I, I'm still doing the flakes and the uh, frozen shrimp mixture. Once in a while, I'll do the flakes throughout the week. And then uh, two days in a week, I don't know which two days, I, whenever I feel like it, I'll add frozen shrimp. I kind of spread it out best way I can. And um, I, at Rick for Blues, I did get a couple other sample food. It seems no one will really like that except for my Flame Angel. I got a uh, same company that makes my uh, frozen shrimp. They had a, uh, I actually forget the name of it, but some kind of sample food that's uh, a veggie that grazes your seed. Powder brown and yellow guy. Don't even look at it. Flame Angel will go for it, but that's besides. So, my recommendation to you guys with tangs or want to get some tangs. If you can get a bigger tank, a 125, 200 gallon tank, that's rough to go. But if you're limited on space, like I am, I'm in an apartment, I can't do much. Um, 54 gallons is really the biggest I can do in my apartment. And you want a tank, you can do it with a 54, with caution. Again, when you're doing a tank in a small tank, watch them. Make sure they don't have ick. They are very prone to ick. Make sure they're not straps. 
make sure they're eating, make sure they're not, they have room to swim, and make sure they aren't growing too big for your tank. I mean, don't grow attached to them that you can't take them back to the store when they're too big. My fish, I love my fish. I look at my tank every day. Even my girls yesterday were in front of the tank. They're like, Daddy, we love your tank. They, TV was off. They were just sitting there watching the tank. I mean, it's a, a five-year-old and three-year-old interested in the tank. So it's definitely, I do love my fish. My family love them. <clears throat> but I do know best thing for the fish is if they're getting too big for the tank, they got to come out. They got to go to a better home. So be prepared for that, guys. Like I said, just thank you for following. Comment, like, subscribe. I'm going to try to do videos like this where I'll pick a topic and give you my personal experience. And I can't stress enough that I'm no expert. You should not take my word as gold. Um, information I provided works for me. That's all I can really tell you. I can't say it's 100%. Uh, it's 100% proven, but 100% proven to me. You really can't know until you do it yourself. Another reefer, Reefer James, uh, coming at you live. He, he's the best one for that. He'll give you tons of information. He's a very smart guy, but he will also say, you won't know until you do it yourself. People can sit here and tell you, you can't put a 54, or a yellow tank in a 54 gallon. You can't do this. You can't put those two together. You gotta find out for yourself sometimes. You can be somewhere like me and do it. Uh, but again, you gotta be willing to pay the consequences. You might have to get rid of them. You might have to do rip your rock out and put a fish in time out. You might have to have a dead fish in your hand. No one wants that. And we, as we all know in this hobby, saltwater fish are expensive. I don't know about you guys, but my yellow, the tangs around here are 40 plus dollars each. So definitely uh, you gotta be willing to pay the sacrifice if you're gonna be stubborn like me. But then again, you can have the fish you really want and be happy with it. So again guys, like, comment, subscribe. If you want me to talk about my personal experience with anything else that I might have that you guys have questions about, I uh, do know right now hot topic going on the Farm Boy Reef Club is lighting. Um, I'm an LED guy. That's a different video. This one is on uh, tanks. So guys, if you want to hear my personal views on other things, I'll show you what I have. Try to add something if I can meet with you guys uh, halfway because, like I said, expensive hobby. Uh, so yeah, feel free to ask questions, feel free to comment, like, subscribe, uh, let me know what you think. If you, like I said, if you have something you want me to talk about, let me know. I'll do a video. I don't know if I'll do this every week or what. I gotta see how they come. I'll probably still do my update videos weekly, but like I said, this is going to be a series called uh, Tank side talk. Alright guys, thank you.